Genie. Und so wagst du den Sprung in den Glauben. Du hoffst auf Erlösung und lässt mich unsere Spur unwiderruflich besiegeln. Du wirst es ändern wollen. Du wirst es ändern wollen. Du wirst es ändern wollen. Doch das wird nicht sein. Du wirst es ändern wollen. Du wirst es ändern wollen. Du wirst es ändern wollen. Doch das wird nicht sein. So now they can hear me, and now they can hear you. Hi. Hi. Hi, guys. How's everybody doing? Um, just, uh, do you have the stream up? Yes. Yep. All right, cool. We're, we're live then, officially. I think. Uh, welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us for another Lethal's Vapor Lounge Live. I'm Chris, Lethal Coils, and this is our very special guest who needs no introduction whatsoever, Mr. Vaping with Vic. Round of applause. I am rather special, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, so, typically how I start this is um, I will give it to you, and you can show off your buffet of the day. All right, you want me to go first then, are you? Okay, that's fine then. <laughs> well, we got two rigs on the run, right on the go right now. The rest is up in the studio. Uh, Black Kelpie on the Q Mini. Mm. That's that. And the second bit of kit I've got going is the stainless steel Kelpie on this little fella that I picked up at Stuttgart, which is the Minikin Boost Kodama, which is rather nice. And yes, I bought it. That is gorgeous. That given to me i actually bought this i do buy things now and again <laughs> that's it don't have anything else on the go right now uh they say it's buffering like crazy um are you getting that no but it has dropped down to 144p okay then maybe obs streamlabs obs must hate me <laughs> I'm not seeing any drop frames though. Hmm. Maybe it's a setting you've got going in Streamlabs. That's what I'm thinking. This this is not a strange thing to have happen on this show. <laughs> <laughs> this, this I am not. Uh, yeah. See, no, no, no. All of those. I haven't changed any of the settings. That's weird. <laughs> And now we should be live once more. I hope this is going to go as planned. We've got chat up. Google Chrome is up. And I do believe we are back. I do believe we are back. We are back. Cool. Let's do 720. And we're back. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, do it. <laughs> and we're back. It looks like it in my screen. Cool. Vic, you're shaking bad. 
No, it's, it's my legs that are bouncing. Hmm. Yeah, looks like we're back. Okay, cool. Buffering again, he says. That's fine because I'm testing this one out. It's going to take a second for it to click over. When it's stream is sick, rub a little VIX on it. <laughs> Potato connection. Oh, Chris, Empire Vape Co. Actually, there's an idea. We'll just blame the Scotch Review. We blame him for everything. <laughs> Poof. Let's go up to 720. Yeah, it looks like we're back here. I'm looking at the stream and it's a full HD and there's no buffering. Back, but still, and poof and back. Hold up, wit. Blame Canada. Um. All right, output low. Why? Ah, uh, anyways, you know what? <laughs> We're going to go. Hopefully, um, I think YouTube will fix that, right? At the replay? Ah, uh, that should. Yeah, it should. It should. Okay. So then we'll, if you guys are out there and you can hear us, okay, looks good now. Looks good now. Don't touch anything. Longest it stayed on. We're going Wi-Fi, guys. We're going Wi-Fi. I'm not messing with another damn thing. We're going to leave it right as it is. Um, apparently, the Wi-Fi connection is stronger than if I have it direct lined into the, the router for whatever well, reason. That means, that means your RJ45 cable needs replaced. There's something wrong with it. Bingo. I'll do that next. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah. So, for me, my buffet, what am I on? Well, first up, I've got the BTFC sitting on top of the Enforcer. Good mod, that. Oh, I really like it, don't I? Um, got that Rig Mod V3 Punisher Edition and the Kennedy 24. Uh, the last mech that I'm on with is the overpowered 21700 Jeez. stack with the Twisted Messes TM24 Pro. Not privileged enough yet to own one of the Eclipse caps, but I really want to get one. Mm. Um Next up, Regulateds, we've got the Topside Dual Special Edition Black and Red with the uh, Black Hellbeast tank on top there, running that sub on uh, with the H1 mesh coils. I really like those. Um, and then we got the Topside Dual in silver with the Drop Dead on top there. That's two Topsides now. That's two. Uh, and then the Noisy Cricket V3, the looks. <laughs> Hey, Brian! <laughs> we got the, the Luxotic NC Noisy Cricket V3 with the Equitas on top there. Uh, favorite RDA of mine. It really is. Beautiful. It looks like we're holding up just fine now. Yeah, it looks like it. Beautiful. Double hand chode action, says Morg. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I'm going to go real quick and blow through some of these hellos and shout-outs to chat. We got Vaping with TC, James McDonough, Beer Weasel, Joe's Ghost in a Car, Need a Newbie, How Are You, Manic Stereo, Puffing Billy. We got BFG Hodson in the house, Gailey Bops, Vaping Noob, Ronnie Campbell, Vaping Scotsman, Allison Warren, Hello, Coil UK, Mike TVA, What's Going On, Stu Rep, Stuart Bridges, Lady Louisiana, what's going on? Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Ian Hopkins, I don't remember if I said your name, but I'm saying it again. Dan Tubman, hello. Do do do. Did I say beer weasel? I did say beer weasel. Long Road Ohm, Timmy, the wolf is in the house. And Skippa? And. Do, do, do. I do believe that's just about everyone. Dave Anderson, how are you? If I have missed you guys, please do give it a shout in chat. I'm going to be trying to keep an eye out there. Brittany Fanning, White Cloud Vapor, what's going on, guys? Um, so, Vic, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for taking some time out of your, your day and joining us for an hour. Thanks for having me on. I should have been on a lot sooner, but busy with shit going on all the fucking time here. Yeah. And I, I had a thought about asking before. I've just been trying to keep track of everybody that I've already asked to come on as guests. And I've got like three weeks planned out. I'm guessing you've basically just asked everybody to come on. I do. Um, but that's because like I like to 
you know, uh, right with everybody uh, that I've had on, it's just a more of a getting to know you, more of a one-on-one, uh, become more connected with the community kind of thing yeah. for me. And so I really do. I'd like to get on as many people as I can. Besides, solo casting is not that exciting. <laughs> 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 That's actually very true. <laughs> you know, it, it's um, it's good to be able to talk about certain topics and what. Yeah, hashtag cam whore. Thanks, manic. <laughs> hashtag. Um, so, Vic, what did I just do with that? I've got some questions for you. Oh God, he's wrote questions, questions, questions down. He's getting all fucking prepared no, and shit. Yeah, don't, 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 don't get scared yet. <laughs> I ain't got that many. Um, as I typically do with newer guests uh, that have come on for the first time, I go over a little bit of getting to know you kind of stuff. So, right. uh, again, there is no one in this room, I, I'm willing to put big money on it, that doesn't know who you are. But for the, those who catch the replay later on that don't know uh, much about you, why, when, and how did you start vaping? How did you get into vaping? Uh, beginning, beginning of March 2014, I was in the hospital to get my gallbladder removed. And usual procedure, chest x-ray, stomach x-ray to make sure it's just the gallbladder that's at, that's at fault. And the anaesthetist turned around and said to me, who he was looking at the uh, looking at the x-rays, by the way, your lungs have started to deform. Now, I was in my late 30s back then, and I thought, well, that sucks. So I thought, yeah, I need to give up smoking. And that's what I did. Gave up smoking. And it was one of the physicians in the hospital that said, Try electronic cigarettes. Actually, one of the physicians in the hospital, and haven't looked back since then. That is unheard of. Yeah. You never hear about a medical professional actually suggesting e-cigarettes as a an alternative. No, yeah, happens here a lot. That's pretty pretty amazing. To be able to see that in a medical facility like that, uh, especially now where we've yeah. got so much against it over here, especially. Um, and what part about vaping and the community made you decide that you wanted to start making videos and, and creating content? I just felt like doing it. <laughs> I hear that. That's how I, I was too. I felt like doing it. Yep. Uh, once I decided I was done smoking on March 30th of last year, uh, I made the same day I made the decision that I was going to do that 30 day vlog, you know, just this is what I went through. This is how it was for me for the first 30 days from the day I decided to quit smoking to a month later, yeah. you know, kind of documenting my whole journey through it. Um, so uh, yeah, I know what it's like. I just on a whim, you know what? I want to do this. I'm going to yeah. do this. That's it. Hello, UK vapester. Hello, biscuit and we Webley family vlogs. How are you? Um, just going over, some things. Okay, next question. How's your scrotum today? Fuck off. <laughs> just, just fuck off. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say who, but I was put up to asking that. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. I wonder who. <laughs> I'm sure you could guess. I wonder who. <laughs> <laughs> what is... Uh, what is vaping with Vic's favorite aspect of the community slash industry and vaping as a whole? That's a bloody good question. My favorite, all time favorite aspect of it. Mm. The expos. Has to be the expos. Meetups? Yeah, the meetups. Because that way you can, that way instead of chatting on Zoom or chatting on, chatting on, um, chatting and live shows, you actually get to see the people face to face. You get to meet the vendors face to face as well. Right. Fucking it's gotta be the expos. Has to be. Yeah. For me, uh it's uh the community thing. Just yeah. the the family vibe that I get out of the community. Everybody's in it for the same reason. Uh well, I wanna say everybody, but we have that one percent that <laughs> just 
Yeah, no, but care. like every family, there's dysfunctional parts of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. We've got those, uh, uh, yeah, we've got those people, definitely, for sure. What? 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 Morg? Hi, I'm Chris. Yes. <laughs> he said my name. I don't know why. Um, oh. TC says, one year completely free of stinkies today. Three years vaping, though, and thanks to Vaping with Vic doing his reviews, I picked up my first setup. Nice that's, one, TC. That's another thing, isn't it? The feeling that you get from people saying things like that. Oh, yeah. You know, saying that you helped them to get off, yeah. either get off of cigarettes or to stay off cigarettes. Uh, the feeling you get from that is just so overwhelming. Well, I get emails like that almost every week now from from people that that's why that's why I kept the Wednesday back solely for starter kits and podcasts, right? And I actually call it Stop Smoking Wednesday now. That's that's the title for the for the Wednesday reviews, and practically it's almost every week now I get an email saying you helped me give up smoking, and that's that's essentially what the channel is all about is to help people give up smoking. It's a that's very good problem. feeling. Mm -hmm. that's very, very good feeling. I've had, um, I've had six people come up to me and tell me that I've helped them to get off cigarettes. And um, admittedly, three of those were very close <laughs> and local to me. Uh, so yeah. people I've known for a very long time. Um, but they've even started watching my stuff and said, hey, you know what? You're, you're really helping me to, to keep off of these. And it's... Uh, for me, it's overwhelming because I'm just so small. You know, it, it. I don't think I would have made that much of a difference to somebody. But then I hear things like this, and it's like, wow. Yeah. I do make a difference, you know. So it gives you a good feeling inside. Oh, it does. And Gailey, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, Darren Robertson wants to know, wouldn't it be the five-year anniversary around this time for the fucking Nautilus? It would be actually coming to think of it. No, would it? June. Yeah, it would be. The not the original Nautilus would have been released around about this time five years ago, twenty fourteen. Holy cow. Yeah. Wow. The original Nautilus. Well, thank you very much, Webley. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Stuart, yes, uh, Jay did do a review of the Kelpie. It was a pretty good one, too. It was, actually. I'm surprised at the score he gave it. Oh, man. That, for him, that's that's a good one. That's high. Yeah. Um, I actually have not tried the Nautilus, so I don't know anything about that one. I have used the coils, though, in the, uh, yeah. the Hellbeast. I've used the coils in the Hellbeast, but that's it. Nautilus was a good tank, but it's time. Was it? Oh, yeah. Best mouth to lung well, tank still... out there for a long time. And long people still time. use the twos. Yeah? People still use the Nautilus too. Oh, yeah, they do. I know a lot of people that still use the original Nautilus Mini. Oh, wow. Now, that, tank's about, that tank's about four years old now. Oh, jeez. Hello, Saint. Mm. Oh, no. Saint is here. Here we go. Oh, joy. <laughs> what what would you say is your favorite old school setup old school setup I don't really have a flat out old school well I suppose the goon's getting pretty old now no that's not really old though is it mm. I don't actually use a lot of older gear now because it's all because of all the stuff that I get in for review it's all new stuff that's I still point. use the not that I still use the Nautilus too but that's not even old what's the oldest bit of cat I've got on the table nothing it's all new it's <laughs> 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 old oh wait a minute I do have an old school setup I forgot about this oh your pipe yeah, I love Guardian that thing. Three. That's about three years old now. In the original Digi Flavor Siren version one, that's about two years old now. I need one of those. I've been looking around for them. Um, my favorite old school setup has to be 
That's, I think it's the only, oh, the oldest old school setup I have is the original uh, uh, Asmodus Snow Wolf 200 watt, the oh, stainless wow. steel with the yep. Plume Veil 1.5. I think that's, that's like the oldest setup I have. And it, I just did that review for the, um, the Plume Veil not too long ago too, and it's still a really good atomizer. Uh, they are a lot of those older a lot of those older designs still stand up well hmm we just made making improvements on them is all i like yeah think. um hello addy tooney how are you um if anybody has questions in chat like i said i only had a few um but if anybody has any questions in chat for either myself or for victor please do leave it in the chat and we'll get there um, let's talk a little bit about your Stuttgart trip. Ah. Oh, obviously the kickoff, uh, w was a bit, left a bit to be oh. desired. <laughs> <laughs> that could have gone easier. <laughs> that could have gone a lot easier. <laughs> oh, man. Well, how long would it have taken you to get there if you guys didn't have that hiccup? Um, we would have, if, 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 if we, if. We managed to get on the first the first flight. We probably would have, we would have probably arrived at about four in the afternoon. Okay. Yeah. About that four in the afternoon. That wouldn't have been that bad. But how long did they make you guys wait? Well, when the first flight took off, it was something like a it was something like a four hour wait for the next flight. Oh. And that was going to Munich, and then we had to get a taxi from Munich to Stuttgart. So we didn't we didn't arrive at Stuttgart until fucking one in the morning or some shit like that. So that was fun. Oh, and then you have to go right to the hotel, get everything unpacked, yeah. and get to bed. <laughs> yeah, but we got there in the end. And you we guys, from everything I saw, had a great time too. Yeah, it was it was a good event. There's no guys don't get it. It was definitely a good event. Um, it was just so well organized. Yeah. Serious amount of organization that went in there. It, it makes it makes the UK Expo look as if it was kind of thrown together mm. at the last minute. But I mean that the the, the Hall of Vape was seriously well organized. I was impressed. You had to pay five hundred for a taxi? Well, it was about three hundred and three hundred and seventy odd euros, which is about three hundred and fifty pounds. So that's about five hundred dollars, yeah. Wait, Buffalo. was that the guy that was going balls to the wall down the road? Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's a, at normal speeds, it's a two-hour journey by car between Stuttgart and Munich. Munich. He was hammering it, though, because he was in the autobahn, and it was like fucking nine. No, in fact, it wasn't nine. It was round about ten, half ten. Well, no, ten, half ten to maybe 11 o'clock in the evening, and the roads were a bit quieter, so he could afford to basically put the boot down. <laughs> Because there is no speed limits on the autobahn. Oh, that's that could be dangerous. Well, it is, but you know, it's it's like the the, the driver test, the, the driving test for Germany is a lot more stricter than the driving test that you find across the rest of Europe. Mm. Um, and by the time you get, by the time you've passed your test, you know how to handle a car at a high speed. Okay. Yeah, we don't have that kind of training over here. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, okay, 60, 60 miles an hour on the highway. That's fine. You don't need to go any higher than that. You know, it's, wow, everybody's so afraid, though. But, I mean, then, I clocked them when, it, when I was looking at, when I was looking at the speedo, I was clocking them at 185 to 190 kilometers an hour. I'm so curious to find out what that would be. In miles an hour. Yeah. A lot. Put it that way. 185 km per hour to MPH. 114, about 115 miles an hour. Jeez, that is fast. Oh, yeah, that's fast. That is plenty fast. Ooh, I got to not do that. I don't know if you've seen any of my other uh, live streams. When I do them from Zoom, uh, I have a habit of moving my mouse and wiggling it a lot. Oh, yeah, I know about the mouse. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I got to stop doing that. <laughs> uh, he said, Empire says he went faster than that. He was doing 150 mile an hour minimum. Jeez. Surprise me if he was. That's crazy. <laughs> 60 miles an hour on a highway, snowflake state. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> that's about right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so what was the food like in Germany? Fucking fantastic. Was it? I uh, just a bit of, a bit of stuff in my face full of bratwurst at the, at the expo itself. Bratwurst <sighs> and chips. Oh, I love a good so beer brat. <coughs> do personally. Uh, I do a lot of grilling, so I, I do a lot of like meats and like I do a lot of um, uh, steamed vegetables in like tin foil and stuff. I'll grill corn on the cob, stuff like that. So I love a good bratwurst, especially in the summertime. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. He was in a Mercedes C63 AMG Black Edition. Yeah, that was the one. It looked as uh, the, the fucking. It looked as if it just rolled out the show through the showroom floor. And That's it was a fucking Uber cab. It was an Uber. Yeah, it was Uber. No but Chris shit. said, but Chris said, because of the amount of money that was being spent, it got shifted up to Uber Premium or something like that. And that's when the fucking the, the showroom because it looked brand fucking new. That's got. Oh wow. Fucking brand new. Wow, that's a crazy Uber. I'd love to get a ride in one of those, but not for that price. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Actually, it was funny. We um, we just seen a couple of days ago. We were down in Salem, Mass. If you don't know where that is, it's um, about a half an hour away from where I live. It's uh, also the which city, capital of the United States. Oh, so um, that's where all like the the witch trials went on, all the right. Salem witch trials. That I grew up down that area, and. Uh, so it's a very historical place, but uh, we were down in Salem maybe less than a week ago, maybe only a few days ago, and all of a sudden I heard this car, and I, I knew it wasn't like your normal everyday vehicle. And so I looked <laughs> over, and there was this Lamborghini Countach rolling down the street, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Fuck. <laughs> it was Fuck. Uh, over 400000 under four fifty. Is what that the price tag on that one cost? Oh, Damn. bastards burned the bitches' ancestors. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. That's about what it was. Uh, so, what Stuttgart, the um, Hall of Vape, that was roughly what twice twice as large as Expo? Maybe a little. Nah. No, I wouldn't say twice as large. Uh, the, the floor. If you were to join the two halls together end to end, it would probably be about it would probably be about three quarters larger than Expo. I wouldn't say it was double the floor size, but you're looking at something three quarters the size of Expo. But the layout that was much much wider aisles between the vendors than you get and than you get in the NEC in Birmingham because the halls are very long and very thin. So even though they had a lot more floor area, everything was more spaced out. So even though the floor area was bigger, they didn't have more vendors than the NEC does. It was only about 350, 370 odd vendors they had. And what does but that I was told that they had to turn back and refuse another 180. Whoa. Because they didn't have the space. Wow. And how many uh, vendors does Expo typically have? Anywhere between 375 to 400. Wow. Okay. Now, were there more people there? Oh, yeah, there was fucking... I don't know about Chris, but I thought there was more people there. Yeah. There was definitely more people there. Okay. I mean, it was like uh, one of the... One of the German reviewers... I can't remember his fucking name now, but one of the German reviewers who's friendly with the organizer said the ticket sales for Saturday alone was just over 20,000. Holy cow. On the Saturday alone. Jeez. Easy 10K plus outside in the car park. Oh, yeah. Easy. Oh, my goodness. Just waiting to get in. I don't think there were even that. What you need to remember is it's that Stuttgart has it a lot easier than 
the UK has, because Stuttgart in Germany is right slap bang in the middle of the European continent. So getting there mm -hmm. is a lot easier than getting to the UK. If you want to get to the UK, you've either got to take the Channel Tunnel, you've got to take the ferry, or you've got to take the plane, which costs a shitload of money. Mm. So getting to Stuttgart, if you're on the European continent, is technically easier and cheaper than getting to Birmingham in the UK for the UK V for Expo. Okay. So, what did you... Uh, I, I haven't had the chance to watch your vlog yet, so I know you've answered a lot of this inside of that. Um, what would you say the ratio hardware to juice was? One hall was full of hardware, the other hall was full of juice. Oh. So I reckon it was about 50-50. Okay. Because it was split between two halls. Yep, yep. So you had, you had hall 9 and hall 10 with like a parkway and an eating area between it and like little restaurants and shit outside. Yep. And both halls were the same size and hall 9 was hardware, hall 10 was e-liquid. Okay. Yeah, see, that's different from, um, from NVE as well. I think, in retrospect, looking back at NBE, I believe it was like uh, two thirds juice and one third hardware, and uh, it wasn't like juice was kept to one area and hardware was to another. It was very, very mixed and mingled. Yeah, uh, that's so, the same as the same as the UK Expo. It's all mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. The, so you, you you got a little bit of everything as you're walking down, but you know it would be nice to have little sections. You want juice, oh, yeah. you go over here. This is all, all the juice stands. You go over here, you've got all the hardware stands, and you got the modders gallery. And uh, But no, yeah, it was all Expo need do is split the halls, get rid of annoying blonde bitch. <laughs> Will you need water? <laughs> you keep BH vape and get a modders gallery done. Lethal Coils, what fun stuff did Vic bring home to review, and did he buy anything special there? I never actually bought much home to review because it was all posted out anyway. Um, I got one or two bits and pieces from Vaptio. I also got uh, the new, I also got the new the new RDA from Vapors Clouds, and I cannot remember the fucking name of it now. But it's that new. It didn't even come in the packaging. It came in a plastic bag. <laughs> Because there was no packaging for it yet. I can't remember the fucking name. It's, it's apparently it's a really good RDA. Everyone's fucking raving about Asgard. Yeah. That's the one. I got the Asgard, but it's one of the newer versions of the Asgard. They don't even have the packaging ready for it yet. It came in a plastic Ziploc bag. It was like, here you go. Uh, when you're reviewing it, just mention you didn't get the packaging. Well, it's kind of obvious because there's no fucking packaging to unbox. So I got one of the newer versions of the Asgard, a couple of bits from Vaptio, but everything else was posted out. Um, that happens over at, over at uh, the UK Vapor Expo as well. They'd rather post it out than wait on the reviewer getting to the vendor, not getting to the vendor, but getting to the booth in case someone else manning that booth gives away that reviewer's package by accident. I got gotcha. you. So they'd rather post it out. As for someone, it's, I think it's the 25 millimeter one, Mike, I got. It's the 25 millimeter one I got. As for something that I bought, I bought this. Oh, that which is so beautiful. Is, yeah, which is the Minikin 2 Kadama. And I got a damn good deal on it as well because they knew me, obviously, because I review for them. So I got this in a very heavy discount. I was happy. Oh, I would be I too. Would be. That looks gorgeous, man. I bet that would be quite the price tag for someone like myself. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. We're half past. Are we? Yeah, okay, we're only half well. past. Um, so, Stuttgart was good. I have every intention of watching your, your vlog later. I watched some of Chris's earlier, um, and he did a great job. I'm actually surprised you were actually able to get footage this time, huh? <laughs> I was actually fucking shocked at the amount of footage I was able to take. I mean, the, the thing about the UK Vapor Expo was um, I, I like it. I like it when subscribers come up and say hello, but there's so many there's so many UK people that recognise vaping with Vic that if I walk down one aisle, it's guaranteed I'm going to be stopped about twenty to thirty times. 
you can't get solid footage when you're doing that. Over at Germany, I was only being stopped about every 10 to 15 minutes, which gave me a chance to get some good long footage, especially on the Sunday when there was a little bit less people there. I mean, 20, that's why the Saturday footage only took up about 15 minutes of the video because I was getting stopped quite a bit. But mm. Sunday was still busy, but not quite as busy. So I managed to get the whole Modders Gallery in. I managed to do a whole walk around tour of both halls during the Sunday. And I was only stopped about 20, 30 times. Oh, wow. That's not bad at all. Now, I believe it was Chris that was saying something about it, that the, the vendors themselves were being very accommodating to reviewers, were they not? Fucking very accommodating. I was shocked at how friendly they were. Mm -hmm. not, Absolutely uh, fucking shocked. Not something you get a lot then? No, not in the UK you don't. No. Cause, because it's like... The, the, hall of, the Hall of Vape is a lot like the UK Vapor Expo used to be a long time ago. It was before all the freebie hunting groups started descending on the UK Vapor Expo. Because if you look at the if you look at the Vapor Expo now, there is roaming groups of freebie hunters. There was the whole thing. There was the whole thing. I think Chris mentioned it as well. There was the whole thing going on about Facebook groups. It's not people pretending to be reviewers now since the UK Vapor Expo tightened up the conditions to become someone with a press pass. Now you've got Facebook group admins walking into the UK Vapor Expo. This happened in May of this year. You've got Facebook group admins with a group of like something like maybe a thousand, two thousand people, right? Walking up to e-liquid vendors and demanding e-liquid and sponsorship. That kind of shit just doesn't fly over in Germany. You just get told to fuck off. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um Funko Pop Geek. What's going on, my man? Vic, when you were over in Germany, did you manage to pick up a Kelpie? I've heard they're very good. <laughs> I did actually I did actually get a shot of the Kelpie. Apparently it's a very, very good little tank. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of Jeez. you guys is vaping with Vic? Well. Thanks, Kev. <laughs> what? Which one of you guys is vaping with Vic? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, and Scotsman says he's interested in the new dead rabbit. Sounded like a stock coil the way you were talking about it. Can't say anything. All I can say is it's oh. not a rebuildable. Come to your own conclusion after that. Oh. In your Actually, hell, hell vape have got. Was it? Yeah, it was hell. Hell vape have got three items coming out in quick succession, and two of them was very interesting. Ooh. Very interesting what they've done to the decks. Very I... interesting going to be keeping an eye out on them i actually i love what hell vape has been doing lately some of the things that they've been coming out with yeah. uh you know the drop dead the hell beast tank uh, i love that hell beast tank um i don't know why i don't usually do stock coil sublim tanks but um that one's definitely one that i've had a hard time putting down um what if, yeah all the the dead rabbit stuff i love all of the dead rabbits um yeah i like what hell vape has been really coming out with lately i think that they're uh they're doing very good work yeah oh yeah they're doing they're, they're doing really good work over there uh ornery 66 wants to know vic in your opinion can the vape expo be improved much more than what we already have as far as flavor and more flavor what huh i'm con confused as well <laughs> I'm a little confused by that. Um, the Kelpie the now chase. will be improved more than what we have as far as flavor and more. That doesn't make any sense, Omri. Or Ormer or, or, or 66. <laughs> oh, no. It's another Orpha for Furf. Orpha for Furf. Or, or, or. <laughs> um, Kelpie now Jay Hayes approved. It what? is. I was, I was surprised at the rating. I was expecting the Kelpie to get five, maybe 5.5 5 pushing it. Because there are some problems with it, namely the fucking deck screws. There are some problems with the deck. I was surprised I rated it that high, actually. I was. I haven't had the uh, the pleasure of trying a Kelpie yet. I will. I will, I will. Uh, what was it? Um, Element Vape carries them, don't they? They should be. I thought so. I thought they I saw be. them there. Um, 
looking forward. Oh, an experience. More in flavor and more flavor experience. Maybe. I'm so confused by this question. I shouldn't I be this. He's asking, can the UK Vape Expo be improved much more than what we already have in the UK? Yes, it can. There is so many things that the organizers of the UK Vapor Expo can do to make the experience a lot more enjoyable and to put it on par with the Hall of Vape. There's a lot of things that can be done to improve the UK Vapor Expo. I think the problem that the UK Vapor Expo had is for at least, at least a good three years, and I think Chris will agree with this one, for a good three years, they had zero competition on the European continent. Nobody could touch them. Nobody. And then Stuttgart popped up in the Hall of Vape. And that just kind of said, hey, look, this sets yeah. a whole new precedence for yeah. an expo. It's raised the bar. It's definitely raised the bar. Manic Stereo, you are going to thoroughly enjoy that Doom RTA. Damn Vape done a really good job of that thing. I saw the, the review and then I saw your, um, the other video, have they fixed mesh? Yeah. The mesh. Yep. That was a, a good one. I'm looking, uh, looking at that one now. <laughs> uh, Empire Vape Co. says he had around seven people recognize him and say hi. One guy said that I made him physically pee himself and his mates at work. He gave me such a tight hug and nearly killed me. He was around six foot seven. <laughs> That's another thing I noticed. All the Germans seem to be fucking, well, okay, I'm like five foot six, but everyone was fucking taller than me over there. <laughs> Oh, TC says Element doesn't sell them, but V Vape Store does. Okay, cool. Gailey says I think now most of the other expos have stopped at the at the football at Birmingham may be bigger. Uh, oh, I think most of the other expos have stopped. The football at Birmingham may be bigger. Okay. Well, they have. I mean, Vape Fest is not on this year. The Doncaster meets not on this year. The Manchester meets not on this year. Vape Jam, if you just need to, you just need to go and watch Chris's footage of Vape Jam. That was an utter fucking travesty, that meeting. <laughs> fucking Ooh. compared to what Vape Jam used to be, it's dead. Vape Jam has died. There's all the small meets that used to go on between the two big expos in May and October, they're all gone. All of them. Oh wow. All of them are gone. Holy cow. Good evening, Loyalist Dave. How are you? UK Andy, Wayne Blackwood. How's everything going, guys? I know that there's uh, a lot of newer uh, faces in the chat. I haven't said hello to everybody, but I want to say an uh, umbrella hello and welcome to the show. <laughs> Rainbow. Rainbow wave. <laughs> um, actually, I saw a comment uh from where did he go jason carruthers <clears throat> our buddy jason he says hey vic got the prizes thanks i can't seem to go past 60 watts with the coils that came in the kelpie box any ideas for a higher wattage vape why can't you go past 60 watts is it just too hot or are you getting dry hits good question if it's too hot I can't remember what I think it was triple core fuse Claptons that came with the Kelpie and that I don't I, I think those triple core fuse Claptons are oming pretty damn high and this Kelpie I've got a Chris Grimes alien and this Kelpie I've got a Chris Grimes alien and they're oming out at point two and I'm able to run these little fellas up at round about 70 80 watts before it becomes uncomfortably hot. J Live Vape and Chill is in the house. What's going on, dude? How you um, doing, LBC? <clears throat> so, yeah, that's a, actually a good question as to why he would uh, have an issue running it. They're triple. He's getting dry, burnt taste. You need to wick it better then, Jason. Go and watch my review. Well, it wasn't really a review. Go and watch the intro video that I did. Also, did you do a review on the Caliburn? I can't remember. Yes, I did. Yep. All right. Uh, we had a question, uh, what's your best pod system to date and how do you rate the Caliburn? The Hexa V2, that's the best pod system right now, but the Caliburn is still a damn good little pod setup. I was using that Caliburn for a good month and a half and then the Hexa V2 popped up and that replaced the Caliburn. The Hexa V2 is a cracking little bit of kit. Mm. 
See, I I was never big into pod systems. I mean, I guess where you get them in for reviews, it's kind of hard not to use them. Um, yeah. For me, I mean, I've just got the Mi 1. Needs a new coil, but <clears throat> I've used the Smock Nord. My wife has one. I don't like Smock products, but I like that Nord. Um, it performs pretty well for me, so... Uh, and um, other than that, the only mouth to lung that I use is my uh, my Hellbeast with the Nautilus two uh, BBC yeah. coils. That's about it. Um, Stuart says he must be a puss. Oh, where'd it go? He's running point three one stainless steel coil. Wait for it. Twelve watts on the Zeus X. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's at point three one? That's low. Is it? Well, point three one. You'd expect to run it at a point three one coil at stainless steel three sixteen. Oh yeah. Twelve watts. That's going to be a rather cold vape. Hmm. Yeah. Is the Rebirth RTA a reload killer? Don't know. I've I've never used a reload. I have a Reload S that was uh, donated to me for review, but um, I don't know about the Rebirth RTA because I've never even used the RDA. So well, the, Re the Rebirth RTA's got fucking phenomenal flavor on it. Phenomenal flavor on that tank. Ooh, You're gonna have to look into that then. There's a actually there's a, a few that have come out that I, I wish I could afford to buy them right now all at once, but. Um, the Rebirth RTA is one. The Glass V2 is something that I was looking at for a while. Yep. Um, the Gear RTA, that yeah. one. Uh, obviously, the Kelpie. Uh, I said that earlier. Um, there's a lot of nice things that have been coming out lately that uh, people have been rating pretty highly. Yeah. Um, did you, going to try out a dual in the co dual coil in the kelpie two millimeter coils may work that's gonna be a fucking tight fit because it's a single coil tank jay no worries buddy thank you for the sub absolutely love it um and vaping with vic i'm good thanks hope your legs are better now uh they're kind of <laughs> yeah a lot of walking huh yeah i'll take it'll take about it'll take a week and a half couple of weeks before they completely recover Oof. Um, dum dum dum. Rocking some banana peach custard tonight. Very nice. That sounds interesting, actually. Hmm. Um. You won't need a gear if you get the kelpie. Says nice guys. <laughs> so I, I wasn't going to say anything, but he's right. Okay. Then I know where I'm going. Then there. Um. <clears throat> Ooh. Yeah, that's actually, Stuart, that's a good idea, too. Try a parallel coil build on that Kelpie. Try a single coil parallel. Yeah, uh, it's, no. it's, it's the airflow, though. That's the thing. It's a restrictive tank. If you're, if you're popping two coils into a deck that's constructed with an airflow system that's constructed for a single coil layout, and you pop dual in there, you're, you run the risk of essentially cooking the tank. Hmm. Because of the heat Even if it's a single coil with parallel? Huh? Even if it's a single coil, but it's paralleled? Well, you could probably get away with a single parallel, but eh, I don't know. I've never tried it. Never tried it. Well, if he doesn't, when I get a Kelpie, I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ronnie says... What did Ronnie say? What did you say, Ronnie? Stuart Bridges. What did you say? Ronnie Campbell got a couple of dead rabbits and a recurved single coil. What is so good about the drop dead? Um, I've got some dead rabbits, and I've got a recurved single coil. And the drop dead, I prefer it to my dead rabbit. I'm not going to lie. Um, it's just more restrictive airflow. I find that the flavor out of it has increased uh twofold you know i find way better flavor out of the drop dead than i do out of the dead rabbit i still love it i still use it but um i prefer the where did it go i just had it there it is it's on the silver top side 
the drop dead. There we go. Do do do. So that's that. Kelpie beats every single coil tank. Live vape and chill says, "I'm on the new Orphafurfur of Conical sub tank." Mmm, finding it really good oh, so yeah. far. Oh. Vaping a new juice called the Kraken Green Absinthe Lime Menthol. Yee. Absinthe and lime. Ew. Ew. Oh. Oh man. Ew. Oh, he um. was asking what to put the on the top side. He won. Drop dead. Oh, you want to put? You want to know what dripper to put in the top side? That's easy, Ronster. That's easy, Ronster. Cthulhu Jolnia. That's what you want to put in the top of the top side. I still use mine, and it's a fucking it's a pretty old dripper now in the grand scheme of things, but I'm still using it. You know why Victor is just that damn good again? Gaily <laughs> <laughs> pops. Um, where did it? Where was that? Weebly Family lo uh, Vlogs wants to know, Vic, um, please tell us the rumor is not true about IBG. Apparently, they're putting out a new tank. I heard that rumor as well. Apparently they're, apparently, they're working with one of the Chinese companies to bring out a new tank. I don't know if it's the rumor that I've been hearing for the past few days. I don't know if it's true because it hasn't been confirmed yet, but that is, that is a rumor. Oh, man. It'll be a stock coiler, obviously. I can't wait to see what they do with that. Um, Mike's Max says, you'll have to excuse LVC Vic. He's from Essex. No account for taste. Well, Ouch. That's true. <laughs> he's in a shed. <laughs> Puffin Billy says he's got a mech mod as old as you, Vic. I don't know if that's possible. What? <laughs> well, not saying you're like Jesus age, but... <laughs> <laughs> How long has vaping been around? On, it never really started taking off till about 2010. Hmm. He's got the old smock mech mod. Oh wow, that's going wow, that's going way back. Because smock in the early days used to make rebuildable tanks, and a lot of rebuildable tanks, pretty damn good ones actually. And they did, they did make a couple of mech mods in wow. the very early days. And how did they screw up with that rebuildable, uh, the RTA section of their tank? They, they ruined it. <laughs> they, they lost the plot. They lost the plot. They did. Definitely did. We are on the 10-minute ten, ten time limit. Thank you, TC. Um, do 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 in 2010, it was still considered witchcraft. Well, it kind of was in 2010, but there, there was... I mean, look at the likes of um, Grim Green. He started reviewing in 2009 or something. Mm. Round about then? Yeah, he's been in the game a long time. Yep. Vapor Swaggins, what's going on, my dude? And Ball Sonic, nice to see you as well, my friend. Um, glad to see you guys could make it. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. How they ruined it, baby beast coils, that's why. <laughs> yep. Yep. I don't know. Uh, I wasn't around in the vaping scene uh, back then. I've only yeah. been I've only been in the game just over three years, I think. Just about three years. Uh, I've been vaping. I was dual use for the first two, and mm -hmm. I've been just over a year um, solely vaping now. Do you ever get, uh, and this is something that I've, I've kind of had happen to me uh, over the course of the past few weeks. You ever get that feeling that you just want to quit? Not for the past year and a half. No. No. Not for the past year and a half. There was a. There was a little, there was a time back in about 2016, 2017 when I was thinking and calling it quits, but not for the past year and a half. I've been thoroughly enjoying this. Good. Thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah, see, I, I've, I've had that thought. Like, it's like, you've quit smoking, now you're vaping. 
you know, sometimes it's like, do you need to? Do I do oh, I feel like I want to? You mean quit vaping? Yeah. I, I didn't mean the mean videos, quit. no. All right, quit vaping, never. Never? Fucking never. I need my nicotine. Yeah. I like my nicotine. If I don't have nicotine, I'll I'll run out, I'll run outside, set a kitten on fire and kick a puppy. <laughs> I need my fucking nicotine. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> you don't want to see me with no nicotine, you really don't. <laughs> so, notice to all in Scotland, keep your cats indoors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually no, you guys wouldn't have to worry about that so much over here in the states. Everybody around here in the neighborhood should probably lock up their cats. <laughs> oh, Vic with no nicotine ing equals angry Scottish nomercon. Fucking right. <laughs> Blastmify Victor. Um, so what do you have uh, coming up this week? Oh, fuck. No, I need to fucking check my website now because I don't fucking remember what the hell I'm reviewing. <laughs> you thinking professional or something? Actually. Right, hold on. Review list. <laughs> what going on this week? I have got the Advocate Dark Mesh Stock Coil sub Omer on Friday obviously the UK Vape shows on tomorrow I've got Saturday I've got the Geek Vape Frenzy Kit uh, next week I've got the A-Mod Val Valric Val Valker that's it the A-Mod Valker RDA the Asmodus Minikin V3S and the V3 comparison and review video all wrapped up in one the Damselfly Poison RDA the Watofo Recurve Jewel and the Og Vape Ocula. That's up next week. Ooh, I've heard very good things about that Ocula. It's uh, as a, it's an interesting post layout, but the, the flavor from the dripper, no complaints with it. Wow. No complaints. <laughs> if vaping gets outlawed, Vic will try to smoke an eggplant. I'd try and smoke anything with fucking nicotine in it. <laughs> Lethal Coils. Fact. In 1927, Joseph Robinson had the idea of an e-cigarette. However, its another name was Hebert, Herbert A. Gilbert, who in 63 came with the idea of vaping. In 65, he patented, patented his invention. But it was Hon Lick. Hon Lick? It was Hon Lick over in China that made an actual mass-marketable working variant, and the tobacco companies basically tried to silence it. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds very familiar. Oh, man. So it's because been out. The technology, the technology was there in the mid-60s for vaping to actually happen. Yeah. Because they could extract nicotine fine. Propylene glycol is something that was around since the Second World War. So they could have made a mouth to lung with 100% PG and just add normal food flavorings. It could have worked in the 60s. Mm. But back then, the tobacco companies were far stronger than they are now. Fucking mm. far stronger. Even in China, they were far stronger. Now, um, that was actually something that I don't remember if I'd ever asked you this before in, in some of our uh, conversations. The flavor bans that are going on over here, do you think that we'll ever see the FDA remove the concentrates from the market? The flavor concentrates themselves. You know, they'd never be able to do that because then they'd need to fight the food industry. That's what I was thinking too. They, they, could, they could never remove they could never remove flavors from the open market because they'd, they'd have to fight the entire food industry if that happened. Yeah. And then you're going up against Nestle, you're going up against Pepsi, Cola, fucking everyone now. The, the FDA would never do it. No. 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 Okay. Thank you. That wasn't actually an update that I needed. Um, <laughs> no, uh, our dog has been um, very, very poorly lately. He's 15 years old, and um, he's come down. I noticed him limping uh, a couple of weeks ago, and so we took him to the hospital. He tested positive for a uh, hospital, the vet. Uh, <laughs> he tested positive for Lyme disease, which accounts for the lameness in his back end. Right. Uh, he tested negative for anything else which is awesome uh but now things have they put him on antibiotics and um pain meds but the pain meds uh we ran out and he's been doing very very poorly since then oh um, so she actually just got back from the vet and he's on some new pain meds which is great 
Uh, hopefully we'll see some improvement there, but yeah. it hasn't been looking very, very good lately. So I've been very, very messed up in the head a little bit. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, awesome guys. Empire Vape Co is going live. What do I got coming up on my channel right quick before we take off out of here? Uh, got some more juice reviews that I've got to do. I'm primarily juice reviewing at this point. Um, mm. I do a couple of uh, hardware reviews that I want to get up this week as well. Um, fortunately enough, the weather is starting to heat up that I could really use the colder environment. So I think I'm going to finally move my stuff down to the basement permanently. Uh, I'm surrounded by concrete walls down there, so it's very, very nice and cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we've got, uh, actually, I've got this whole line of yogi juice to do. It's all granola bar based, like a honey granola bar base to it. Um, I've got the original, which is just that. And then they've got all different twists on them. They got strawberry, peanut butter, banana, apple, cinnamon, uh, blueberry, lemon. Lemon's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, Addy. Um, much appreciated but uh yeah i've been saying it for a while btfc tm24 pro want to get those done and get those out as soon as i possibly can uh i'm trying obviously real life has a hold on me at the moment but um so that's that guys we're gonna wrap things up do you have anything you wish to say before we uh in goodbyes just thanks for watching folks don't forget to subscribe to lethal's channel and then tune in to chris's live show after this one finishes absolutely thank you very much vic for being here with us uh it's been a great pleasure having you on the show um lots of good fun. conversation uh, thank you everybody in chat for joining us today all the new people out there thank you very much for tuning in it's been great having you hopefully you guys liked what you saw you'll throw us up down below uh and don't forget to head over to chris empire vape co show after as vic had said to all of my spanners i love you all thank you so much for doing such a fantastic job I'm Chris Lethal Coils. He is vaping with Vic. And guys, please do remember that we're the masters of our own destinies. We're the only ones in this world that can pick and choose how positive or negative our days will ever be. So please remember to keep that positivity high. Keep the smile on your face and let that negative just brush off your shoulders. Big love, everyone. Thank you so much again, and I'll catch you on the next one. Till then, peace. Bye. Bye. Now we're